This is the Neuroflex Restorative Flex Knee. Uh, just have a few different sizes to show you that we do these from infants and toddlers on up. And we even do bariatric sizes. Uh, we can custom do uh, this splint. We routinely do them uh, custom. They don't always have to be custom, but sometimes they do for uh, a below knee amputation and that knee joint has become flexed in order to fit a successful uh, lower limb prosthesis, a, a, um, a lower limb for that patient so they can walk, uh, you have to correct the knee and we can do that. So if you have that type of issue, just call us at Restorative Medical and we can certainly uh, talk you through that. But we have seen this device over the years just almost create miracles. It's amazing um, what you can do. You can even take uh, knees that are so severe that the heel will be up in the buttocks. And anytime you have that, you know that you have warm, moist, dark environment behind that knee joint. So it can easily get skin breakdown. It will breed bacteria. So you have to open the knees up to get that uh, blood flow going and get air to that area. And if there is a wound, then to be able to treat it. Um, we also know that if you go beyond 90 degrees of flexion, you're probably bed fast. Uh, in order to sit up in a chair, you have to be at least 90 degrees. It has been thought uh, in old times, years ago, that you couldn't do anything about this, but we know you can. We've seen it for years. And I, I know in the year 2000, we know that we had two gentlemen in the state of Kentucky that had heels in their buttocks. And it took 12 months, but the end of 12 months, a year, uh, both of them were standing and walking. But you have to use your imagination. You have to put it on. Uh, you're going to follow the process, and let me show you how we start that. First, you're going to open the uh, joints. You're going to unscrew the knobs. It's a very simple little knob, and they're captive, so they won't come off in bed and uh, have a bolt sticking out. You're going to loosen the sidebars, and each a uh, hinge has teeth that are about five degrees, so it's very simple to see how you're progressing. Now, there's several ways to put this on, and you will decide how, uh, working with it, how you like to best put it on. Some people will set the hinge at a degree. Uh, they may measure the patient's knee or just hold uh, this beside the knee as you've stretched them passively until you meet resistance. And then you just want a little stretch, maybe five, 10 degrees, but never overstretch. You run the risk of not only hurting them and tearing muscle, uh, ripping the muscle away from tendon or tendon away from bone, but you also run the risk of kicking in that stretch reflex, which will cause them to rebound back. Uh, you also can put this on the patient and then stretch it out until you feel uh, behind that knee. Uh, we call it piano wire or guitar string. And when that tightens up and you can feel that pop down, you want to put it on at that degree. You can put five, 10 degrees stretch on them. You just don't overstretch. But most of the final, um, how far you tug their knee down in here is going in the splint is going to be decided on how tight you pull cinch down the kneecap. So let's say we've, we've measured and we've decided this is the angle we want. You make sure the both uh, sides are at the same angle. If one is uh, at one degree and the other is at a different degree, you can torque the splint and you don't want to do that. So just either measure them with a goniometer or eyeball them and see what degree they are. Then you're going to open this up. Now this is set for a right knee. The knees and elbows come to you, the flex knees and flex elbows. Uh, we're talking about hinge joints, so they're the same uh, design. Um, you want these straps to go over away from the body, so I would put this on my right knee. 
uh, but both the flex knees and the flex elbows come to you that uh, could be right or left. In order to change that, this one to a left, I would simply open up this strap, pull it out, smooth that back down. I would open this side. With the strap Velcro up away from the splint, you're going to slide it in and attach it back on itself. And this is also how you would adjust the length. To make it longer, you would pull the strap out farther. To make it shorter, you would pull the strap to make it shorter. You want it to hit on the heavy loop. Uh, we sew heavy loop material on any place where we anticipate you're going to be putting Velcro repeatedly. Um, it will stick to any of this material, but it'll pull this. This will make your padding last much longer. So we'll take it back because this is a, um, it's going to be a right knee. So we'll put it back over here. Again, your Velcro's up. You slide it in, strap away from the splint and smooth it down. Now it's ready to put on. So um, we're going away from the body. So with the initial fitting, you will adjust all four of these straps. Once you get the splint where you want it and you want to suck the knee down, in the leg down in the device because the device is going um, to work with the neurological tone and with the shortened tissue to actually allow that patient to move in it, but to provide the, um, the tug and resistance to that tone to allow it to relax. And also the prolonged low load passive stretch required to realign the actin and myosin proteins in sarcomere units in the belly of the muscle to prepare them to be relengthened, which our process we know is about six weeks. So we're going to put this on uh, just to work through tone, just to work through tone to reach relaxation. We want that knee to continually relax. Then uh, if it loosens up before the six weeks, six to eight weeks, you can certainly open the hinges and adjust them farther toward extension, toward correction. But we want the caregivers and the patient themselves to have realistic expectations and not feel like if they're not uh, you know, progressing in a week or two that it's not worth it and they're going to take it off. We have to help them understand that it may be six to eight weeks before we're ready to readjust it farther, but we have to allow the muscles to be prepared to be re-lengthened. We don't re-stretch, we re-lengthen for permanent um, correction. So all you do is open this up. You're simply going to take it under the patient's leg you have their leg laying in it. You're going to attach your cuffs. You can put the kneecap on first, this, however you decide you like to do it. But you want to start it up a little high because just uh, uh, working with the patient's knee, it will scoot down a little bit, and that's just gravity. So we've got this up nice and high. You want to center the kneecap and bring this strap through, bring this strap through. You want to make sure there's no pressure. And if you have someone that has a really bony knee, um, you really worry about their um, skin integrity, uh, you can uh, order kneecaps with a gel-like uh, substance in them that will give them a lot more padding. This kneecap is more than adequate for almost all your patients. So we're going to adjust all four straps until you get it exactly where you want it. Get that knee sucked down in there. Um, then from now on, 
all you have to do is open the two outside ones and it's very easy to don and doff. This will allow your patient then to work through their tone and spasticity. You may see them actually work it or you may just see them uh, tight with tension. But in about five, 10 minutes, you should be able to come back and feel the back of their knee and it will soften and you know you have a nice stretch and not an overstretch. To take it off, you simply open the Velcro straps, open just the two outside of the kneecaps, tuck them back on themselves to protect them, and you slide it off your patient. It's very, very simple, very effective. And again, you want to take them from where they are, and when, it, when they loosen up, then you open the hinges and you take them farther toward correction. It's that simple. You just open it, tighten that down, but keep on. At least every two months, you're going to check this patient again. You're going to see if they've loosened up enough that you can progress them a little further. When you straighten the knee, which you're not going to be able to straighten everybody, but at least give them the chance. Think about if you can straighten that knee and have their feet corrected to where they can stand, then they can be picked up by therapy to put in a standing frame. That will help maintain the minerals in the long bones of the leg and fight off osteoporosis. Um, that will help them to empty their bladder. Men's anatomy, they really need to stand to empty their bladder. Women need to sit at a good 90 degree angle or a little bit greater. But it's very important for the health and welfare. And imagine if you sat or laid in bed all the time to be able to stand again. Now, if you can stand, can you take one step? If you can take one step, can you take more? then you might have a potential for ambulation training. If you can start to walk, even with a walker and assistance, just a little bit, what a difference that'll make in your health and how you feel about yourself. So again, this is the Neuroflex Restorative Flex Knee. Um, the label is at the top. It's at the back of the thigh. The plastic would be at the back. You're doing the three-point leverage, would, just like you're doing range of motion. It would be at the back of the thigh, the back of the, the um, calf, and at the knee. So it would be lined up if you were doing range of motion with that patient like this. That's exactly what it does. It just replaces your hands.